Hey there guys, welcome to an episode we're going to call Wayne's Big Box. Yeah, don't, don't start, don't even wonder, you'll never figure it out, so you just watch the episode. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is I have my North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic t-shirt on from like a decade ago. If you find yourself in North Mississippi about the third weekend in June, you're going to want to catch the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. If you are anywhere else in the world, you should be getting in a car right now, a boat, uh, whatever it is you're using to get around. Hey, donkey, you should be getting in or on or or whatever, and be getting to the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. Now, the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic has been known to raffle off my guitars. So, besides my guitar, the talent there is incredible. North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. Okay, guys, back to my license plate guitars. I make quite a few. Um, I think there's a demand for them. I think that when Gallia Volt, who signed it right there, is using one of my license plate guitars on her album cover and recording songs and other artists, I think I just might be okay at this. I put them together. But there are some problems when you start using, when you go from using, uh, look, uh, these are all Mississippi license plates. <sighs> yeah, buff like this doesn't just happen, but you notice that I got these, and then I got this. One of these plates is totally different. One of these plates is not the same. Do you get my problem? Let's talk about what I usually do, and then we'll talk about what I have to do with a, a license plate guitar I'm making for Wayne, Wayne's big box, because Wayne's license plate is bigger than what I usually use. Okay, first, you know that you can use a frame kit and glue it up, pre-made frame kit that fits... Say, for example, this, I don't know, let's see what we got here. Maybe this 1932 Mississippi truck plate. Yeah, it fits right on here. John Sawyer has these. I'm going to give you a link below to John Sawyer. Now, if you want to fight yourself, you can also use a Patron 7000 box. They will hold a license plate like so. But, again, the big problem here is if you've got one of these long, old ones or a European plate, they won't, it won't fit. Of course, you can't have that hanging off there. That looks all shiftless. Come on. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that we can search the cigar box world uh, and never find a box that is going to match the... Michigan, by the way, this Michigan plate is from 1953. Most states had gone to the smaller plate, the standardized plate that we all know and love, except the new ones that are made out of paper. But um, you can tell that this Mississippi plate is longer. See that? So they're not the same. So if you think we can standardize things, we can't. So we can just blow a template together and make a kit. Uh, similar to this, but some of these plates are completely different. And so we end up getting lumber. And when you're trying to put lumber together and get everything straight and do all this and use wood that's thick enough and durable enough to make the weight of the body okay. That, by the way, is what I really don't like about cigar boxes and which is why I always use Camacho boxes. They were tough, durable, and heavy. 
Um, and, and I don't know about tone wood when you're putting a screaming pickup on something. But anyway, getting these corners right is a hassle. And you end up having to do one of these. Yeah, one of these dovetail. Yeah, again, this kind of buff doesn't just happen. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean I don't mean it. That kind of rhymed. Almost, it almost sounds like a foreigner song, right? Okay, so when you start gluing up corners, you got to use these fancy clamps like this. You ever seen one of these? Of course, I have the cool stuff. So this episode, you might have figured out, we are going to make a guitar for a dude named Wayne. It's got a long plate. We're going to have to make the box. And I'm going to show you a really cool, simple way to put a box together for one of these oversized plates. And you're going to go, dude, you are so smart. But don't be redundant because you're saying that all the time. Anyway, let's hit the bench. All right, guys. I was talking so much trash there about all this stuff here. And about that neighbor going by in the loud truck. But let me recap this for you um i build license plate guitars I typically use a kit frame that's cut and glued together i usually get these from john sawyer and i will again give you a link below or there are some people that i know that use patron 7000 boxes because they like the tone of things Let's say you're going to make one where amplification isn't so important. But yeah, this is a Patron 7000 box. And a license plate will fit on there like so. Now the issue I have in this case is this Michigan plate from 1953 um, doesn't fit here. And it certainly won't fit on the kit. Um, and this Mississippi uh, plate from 1932 is even bigger. By the way, I got this still in the package, and the packaging on it had the address uh, lines and blanks to fill in uh, at the DMV, if that's what you called it back then. It said Mr. So I guess only a Mr. could buy a car uh, tag in 1932 in Mississippi. I'm sure that's not shocking to anyone. But anyway, the typical things that we're using, whether it be the kit or the Patron box, isn't going to work here. So let's figure out how to take dimensional lumber and uh, build our own box. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out, maybe we want to use, well, we typically use a piece of poplar neck wood. And we just build a box out of this. Um, it'll be nice and light. It'll give us the thickness we need. Or we can use something a little heavier, wider, like so. Um, I'm going to choose to use the wider piece. Now, this is red oak. So you want to think about, is the box heavy? Um, how do you want this all to work out? Um, so make your choice here. And I'm going to tell you, in terms of the corners we're going to do, this one or one an inch narrower is probably better than this. Um, but the trick here is I am going to try to work a piece of wood up here and not bash into the lights. But the problem that we have in building these boxes is to get this corner square. Um, and, and again, we don't want to be doing dovetail joints and all that kind of stuff. We want to be able to do something that's going to be pretty easy uh, to do and it's going to be durable in the end. So let me show you a little nifty idea that will give you all of that and something pretty easy that you can do at home with simple tools. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to determine how thick this wood is. See, we want to take a square we want to set the square to the depth of the wood. 
I'm trying to do this where I can get the camera angle right and not have everything slip slide in a way. But anyway, we want to take a, a square and get this measurement, this thickness, okay? That's really important. The next thing we want to do is we want to figure out where the center of the wood is, the center. And so I'm going to take my metric ruler because I can look at the inches and go, it's an inch and, well, it's a little bit less than three, but a little bit more than uh, a three. It's, excuse me, rented lips. It's a little bit less than three and a half, even though they sell it as a four inch board. Can you believe that? That's a marriage for you. And it's a little bit less, and so it's like uh, 87, 30 seconds, and a 16th. Or I can just flip it around, and it's 88. Half of 88 is 44. So I'm going to make a mark at 44. I'm going to do, do uh, a line across here, but that line needs to be the depth of the wood. I'm going to take a bigger square and I'm going to make a mark right there. Now you, you want to remember if your wood isn't right for you or whatever, you can run it through a planer if you have one. But then I've got that center mark right there and I want to know where the center is like so. So we've got the thickness of the wood matches this line here, and the center is here. Now, I'm going to, using that center line there, I am going to color this in like so, because I want to cut this out. Cut the square out. So I can do that with a hand saw. I could do that with... A band saw is what I'm going to use, but I want to make sure that this area here, part of this is cut completely out. Then while we're here, I'm going to take the plate I want to use. In the case of Wayne's World, we're going to use this Michigan plate. And I'm going to figure out where I want that. To I'm going to want a little bit of overhang. Of course, this will be stood up on its edge, but I want to eyeball that. We've got the same amount sticking out, like so. And again, if it were the Mississippi plate, it would be longer, but you want to cut to the plate you have, and then we're going to make a mark down here. We're going to cut it like so. Now, Guess what? I'm going to do the exact same thing down here. Once I cut it, I'm going to lay this at the edge. I'm going to make a mark there. I'm going to come across here like so. It's the same thing as here. I'm going to find my 88 mark here in that lower line, or 44, because the whole thing is 88. So I'm going to go to 44, and that's going to be my center line there. Since I didn't cut this yet, I'm going to have to think on my toes. And that's always dangerous when I start doing that, right, guys? But I do the same thing here, except up here, I want to alternate this one here. So once I cut this here, I'm going to cut out this section here, which is the opposite of this. You with me? Okay, I cut one piece on the chop saw. I'm going to make sure that these are lined up. Good on the ends like that. And then I'm going to go down here. And I am going to mark this one and make the cut to give me two this size. 
Okay, I have two pieces the same. And I need to replicate what I did on this one here. So I'm going to take my square on both ends. I'm going to mark down what is the depth of the wood on both ends. We're going to take this square and mark that off. Okay. Like so. I know this is monotonous and tedious, but you'll get it here in a minute. Like so. And then, of course, just as before, we are going to find the 44 mark on each end. Like so, and then again, we're going to using the other one as our guide. We are going to mark off opposite corners. You see that? Okay, now I'm going to take this to a bandsaw and I'm going to notch out my opposite corners on each of these boards. Last thing I'm going to do is make sure that. I measure a few times. Oh, I don't want to knock over my light here. Check that out. But I want to make sure that my license plate fits. Like so. And we're good. See you in a minute. Okay. One, two. Are you starting to get the idea here? Check this out. Oh, look at that. So that leaves us with two more pieces of wood to cut because these are the sides. Notice that I can flip them over, turn them around, offset the cuts, make them opposite. But now what we need to do is find out how wide the plate is using about the same overlap there. We're going to cut, guess what, two pieces of wood the exact same way, except they're shorter. And you guessed it, we are going to use the same thickness of wood here, like so. In the same 44 inch measurement here to watch this little trick. I already know the center is up here, so I'm just gonna do it here as well. Flip this off like so and once again block out one side and we'll do the other down here the same way once we cut this up we're gonna have two of these again same thing put one on top of the other make sure the ends are flush I remember the first time I ever used a clamp Anyway, we're going to make a line over here and cut this one off to the same length. All right, block in the opposite corner. Same on this one.
Isn't this peaceful? I guess. And then once again, our 44 mark is right there. And we will run that center point here and here. Make sure things don't move around. And just like this one, we will block off this one and this one on the bandsaw. Okay, there you go. You're smart people. Even if it's only from watching my channel, I think you see what's happening next. We stand this one up on end. We stand this one up on end. And you know what? I think I want to turn this one over because I'm kind of an artistic kind of person. Look at that. Ooh. Isn't that something else? And of course we're going to put this one back here and once we square this up it wants to drop right in because of our neanderthal dovetail joint and this fits on here Ooh, just like that look at that now there's a little problem the holes on this plate have nothing to attach to. So guess what? We're going to cut a few pillar blocks out of this and we're going to put them right in here where it goes. Now, the final thing we're going to do is we could glue these up and use these fancy corner clamps like this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? These are pretty handy. You have a spring-loaded clamp. It's not as long as you're not some old arthritic man. You see how that works? You can just put these on like so. And those corners come together. Now, I want to tell you what I'm going to do here. With the pillar blocks that are going to sit inside where the license plate sit, I'm going to glue those on. They're going to be of a uniform uh, length for all four. Uh, but when it comes to how I'm going to solidify this before I put the final gluing on, I'm going to glue these like so. And then I'm going to run these through a belt sander and make sure nothing's sticking out. But I'm actually going to drill a dowel down all the way through here. So we have some perpendicular support tying these together and it will look good. I can also use dowels on the outside where I'm going to put the pillar blocks in to hold the plate bones connected to the box bone like that here, here. And I will have some doweling that makes this decorative. My, aren't I artistic? Okay, we're going to get ready to do some glue up. Oh, I wanted to show you a little trick here. These old fishing rod holders are a pretty good way to keep all your doweling together. And um, what I'm talking about here is taking a long bit. Once this is glued up and dried up, we're gonna drill this all the way through and put this piece of wooden doweling there. And you've got some choices. You can use different kind of wood or something to accent this and again where your pillar blocks are going to go just choose your kind of wood maybe there's a, a little tree over here in this area okay so first things first um let's get the tight bond out and glue this up little bit of a mess. That's why we have these paper towels.
All right, let's wait for glue to dry. Glue is starting to dry up and I have put the plate on top and made a mark on the box wherever the edge of the mounting holes are. And I have put that line there. I have cut four two and a half inch blocks that are made out of neck wood. I have a little template here that shows me the middle. This is how I lay out a string pattern on a three string guitar and I'm going along to the center of these. I've run these across the belt sander and we're going to put four of these on like so. Last one and then what's going to happen is I can take that mark right there and look at the top like so and then we're simply going to line this up with this mark right here make sure it's flush with the top like so we're going to glue it and then use a big spring clamp like so to glue those on. Once everything is dry, then we'll run decorative dowels in to make sure it never separates and glue those on. All right, little trick here, these sp spring clamps, if you get everything lined up and you don't want your stuff to drift, just bottom this part out on the two tops of wood and it'll be level when you're done. So there we go, more glue drying. All right, look at that. You know what, maybe I can get this clamp off of here. Ooh, that turned out slick. See, there's like a, a dovetail joint. There's a little bit of sanding to do on here. We will get that done. And then it will be time to run some dowels down into the corners here. Okay, everything turned out pretty smooth. You see those joints are real simple, uh, but it's effective. So now what we're going to do is going to be kind of decorative. Uh, but also very functional, especially the ones we do on the pillar blocks because these are just glued on. We want something better than that. So we're going to run a couple dowels in each one of those. But the big thing that we want to do here is we want to dowel. I think this drill bit's long enough. We want to dowel down into the corners. And so... We take half of the thickness of the board, and the boards are all the same, and so we do that and this, and that's going to give us the spot to drill our hole for the dowel. Now to get things started on these corners, we want to make sure that we Get an owl going, an owl, not an owl. There's owls outside, but we want to make sure we got a good start point because it's kind of important we keep these straight while we're drilling. It's just a matter of taking this huge bit way up in the air like this and running it all the way down through the bottom. There we go. Okay, now we're going to take our long piece of dowel 
I'm going to mark it there, like so. And just cut it off with a flush cut saw. There we go. Look at that nice, clean. Oh, you can't beat that. Look at them corners. Clean one owner. We gotta put some dowels in these pillar blocks and then. Ooh, look at that. Alright, the next thing we want to do is dowel through these pillar blocks that are gonna hold the plate. Now, whenever I am gonna dowel something that is in two spots or running strings or cutting string holes. Uh, for string keepers and a tail piece. And this thin wood, I never want to put things in a line. So I've cut a template that's the same size as one of these pillar blocks. And I'm going to decide that I want the dowels to run at an angle. So I've cut them at an angle. It kind of looks like a domino. So if I line this up like so, right here, and I take my pencil and run around like this. See that? Now, if I want to make the pattern match back here, I'm just going to flip this over and do the same thing. Line that up with the center. Notice I didn't get too close to the edge. Okay. So when they go through and hit the pillar block, I don't want that. Now I'm going to take my awl, my trusty mallet and just tap me the starter hole so we don't get all crazy going in there. Like so. Then I'm going to drill these out. Now I'm not going to put the dowels in until I get this stained because I do want the dowels to contrast with the outside of the box so you can see that they're in there and it'll kind of give it some human interest. All right, guys, we are at the end of another utterly disamazing episode. We took some simple wood, made a simple cut or two, made a simple dovetail joint, put some dowels in it, and we have just the right size custom holder for, that's right, Wayne's Big Box that will hold Wayne's Michigan license plate. We're going to stain this with Oak Gall ink. We're going to leave the dowels out of the pillar blocks that hold the plate on until everything's dry there and we can make a contrast there. Now, I want to tell you that a lot of these plates are old and different and when you go to your wood shop, you can find some crazy stuff, get ready to pay for it. But if you've got an old plate that's worth a lot of money, you might think yellow heart might match that plate. You might think Bacote wood might. Look at that. It almost looks like this was made for this. But there's a wood that I want to show you. That I think it's so cool. It looks like something like eucalyptus bark or something. But it's tan and it's got bluish gray. And it's called Blue Mahoe. You want to try this. Anyway, don't let lack of imagination get in your way. If I can do it anyone can. You're going to want to keep your eyes open for the guitar that comes away. These coffee cans that are trying to attack me. You know what? I'm not even going to bother. Let that one roll. Put up historical marker. I have made a mistake right here and you saw it. Anyway, keep your eyes open for Wayne's guitar. We're going to put a neck on it and this box gives us the opportunity to do stuff like put sound holes in it put a, uh, a piezo in it so it's acoustic. Uh, you know what? I might even be able to tell you, you could make this into a stomp box. And I did an episode right up there right about now that shows you how to do exactly that. So, hey, give me a subscribe and a like if you haven't. And I will see you next time.